Yo, what up? Casey here with Living Youthful. Welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, please hit that subscribe button. So today's video is going to be one for the record books. I can guarantee that. I have got so much detail jam-packed in this video with BPC-157, TV-500, CJC-1295, NODAC, and Ipamorellin, how they all work synergistically. I'm not going to go over benefits too much today. I'm mainly focusing on dosing strategies, breaking down the 5x5 vial and the five milligram vials. We're gonna be going over local versus sub Q. So where to administer these peptides so we get the most effects. And the other topics we're gonna to cover are all gonna be related to how we get maximum benefits with these peptides. Let's get into it. The synergistic relationship between CJC-1295, NODAC, Ipamorelin, BPC-157, and TB-500 forms a powerful combination. This blend of peptides provides not only anti-inflammatory benefits, but also enhances tissue repair mechanisms. It is particularly effective for individuals seeking to enhance recovery, improve body composition, support systemic regeneration, and optimize age-related processes. BPC-157, also known as Body Protective Compound 157, is recognized for its powerful healing properties. In terms of synergy, the elevated levels of growth hormone GH and insulin-like growth factor 1, IGF-1, produced by CJC-1295 no DAC and ipamorelin can further amplify the healing effects of BPC-157. This combination can lead to faster recovery from injuries and improved tissue repair. CJC-1295 NODAC is a compound that naturally stimulates the pituitary gland to increase its secretion of growth hormone. This results in elevated levels of insulin-like growth factor 1, IGF-1, a hormone that plays a vital role in growth development and tissue repair. Synergistic effect. By boosting GH levels, CJC-1295 NODAC enhances protein synthesis, promoting muscle growth and recovery. This effect can complement the tissue repairing properties of BPC-157 and TB-500. All right, this will be our last one, okay? Similar to CJC-1295 NODAC, ipamorelin stimulates the natural release of growth hormone. Synergistic effect, when combined with CJC-1295, ipamorelin can maximize GH secretion, leading to enhanced recovery and anti-aging effects. This can further augment the tissue repair capabilities of BPC-157 and TB500. Excellent for stimulating GH release naturally while building muscle, burning fat, at the same time repairing, rejuvenating, recovering, all these mechanisms, very important. All right, if you guys are still watching, which I hope you are because this is the most important stuff right here. This is the stuff you guys are all waiting for. First, we're just gonna go over the dosing strategies and ranges for CJC-1295, NODAC, and Ipamorelin based on current science, okay? The typical dosage range or strategy for CJC-1295, NODAC, and Ipamorelin is 200 to 500 micrograms a day, okay? So anywhere from 200 to 500 micrograms a day. It's a duration of 12 to 16 weeks followed by a 30 day break for receptor sites. And then recommended schedule is five days on, two days off, or six days on, one day off. I researched these peptides five days on, two days off, because I like to do them Monday through Friday and then take the weekends off. It was easy for me to fast before my peptides or before my administration during the week. And then I could just take the weekends off and not have to worry about fasting at all. So the best time to do these peptides is before bed. If we do these peptides right before we go to bed on a fasted stomach, because this is when we get the most significant spurt of GH is in our REM sleep. The next best time would be in the morning upon waking up on a fasted stomach, but we can wait just 30 minutes to an hour and then we can eat. I like to wait longer because I always like to be really fasted if I'm trying to burn weight, trying to get through that stubborn fat in the stomach. And then the third time is after a hard intensive workout. So after we have a hard intensive workout, we can come home, do an administration of these peptides, wait 30 minutes to an hour, and then we can eat. These are the three best times. This is when we're gonna be releasing the most HGH. So complementing it with these peptides is really gonna enhance the effects. Why we fast is because insulin after we eat spikes and it's gonna use the same receptors as the GH peptides. So if the GH peptides don't have access to those receptor sites, then we're not gonna get as good of benefits. Usually 500 micrograms is for like super athletes, athletes, and people that expend a lot of energy. So dosing strategies start at a lower dose. 
Always get our blood work done. All right, so that was CJC 1295, no DAC and Ipamorel. Now let's jump into dosing strategies and ranges with BPC-157 and TB-500 based on current science. So severe soft tissue damage and acute tears. For effective repair, administer one milligram or 1,000 micrograms of each peptide daily for one to three months. All right, splitting the dosage, 10 to 12 hours apart for optimal results. Since these peptides are rapidly cleared from our body, then it is better to split the dosage. So if we're doing one milligram, then it is better to do 500 micrograms in the morning, 500 micrograms in the evening, 10 to 12 hours apart. So that way we keep these peptides in circulation to rapidly repair injuries, wounded tissue, acute tears. Some of you guys might have questions like, well, I heard that TB500 has a longer half-life, so only needs to be done twice a week because otherwise it's a waste of money. So look it, I just put out a video on the half-life of TB500. If we're only doing TB500 twice a week, then that's great for a maintenance phase, but not a loading phase or a repair phase. And we will be going over those publications today so you guys can see. Okay, so there's some different protocols for these peptides. Since 500 micrograms is a conservative dosage, this is more for anti-aging effects. So we could do 500 micrograms for four to six months, and this would be the anti-aging protocol. If we have chronic pain, is a six month treatment protocol. First three months is one milligram daily, and then we could drop the dosage to 500 micrograms for the last three months as a tapering off phase or a maintenance phase. It is good to take 30 days, two months break. Now let's get into pre-surgery. So if we're going into surgery, one to two milligrams a day for three to five days before our surgery. Post-surgery protocol, one to two milligrams, splitting the dosage for seven to 14 days after. So seven to 14 days, has shown to be a good healing time. Of course, it could take anywhere from 30 to 90 days, even 120 days. And this also works with cosmetic surgery, hernias, and scars. So that was for pre-surgery and post-surgery. Let's get into the stuff that really is gonna answer people's questions. So dosing strategies and ranges based on current science still. A loading phase or a repair phase? So the loading phase is when we're trying to repair an injury, okay? So this is when we're really gonna wanna keep the peptides in circulation. But if we just need to maintain or taper off, then we can do two days a week or three days a week, e.g. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, at doing a higher dosage. And this is actually based on scientific documents so first one right here. So this is just going to show that TB500 has a very short half-life. From scientific reports, additionally, the studies above administered TB4 peptide, which has a relatively short half-life with enhanced levels in the plasma evident for only six hours following administration. So if you guys are interested in learning more about TB4 and its half-life, I have a video that I just released. It's my latest one. Check that video out, but we'll go one more publication. This is from the National Library of Medicine, PubMed Central. These pharmacokinetic studies of T-beta-4 in mice have established that high levels of T-beta-4 are found in blood following IP administration and the kidney rapidly removes the peptide from the circulation. So these are just two reports that TB500 has a very short half-life. So we wanna make sure it has the same dosing protocol as BPC-157 to get maximum benefits for repair. So here we go. BPC-157 administration, local versus systemic distribution. Scientific findings, BPC-157 enters systemic circulation after administration, regardless of whether it is administered near an injury site. That's one. Localized administration, e.g. near a tendon, ligament, or muscle injury, does not significantly concentrate BPC-157 at the site compared to systemic distribution. Systemic effects dominate. In both Rota and Equine models, researchers found that BPC-157 rapidly enters circulation post-administration, subcutaneous or intermuscularly, and distributes throughout the body regardless. So it doesn't matter if we do it locally because the peptide is going systemic and gonna distribute throughout the body regardless. One thing I gotta say about this, so if we're doing a protocol for one to three months and administering it in the exact same spot, it's gonna be so sensitive and build so much scar tissue. And let's say you wanna put it in your shoulder for an elbow injury or in your shoulder for a shoulder injury, there's still only so many spots. 
and this will create sensitivity and scar tissue. So different route sites. So the best way to get different route sites that have lots of blood circulation and blood flow is in the stomach and in the glutes. Studies using oral, IP, or subcutaneous SC routes all showed effective healing at distant tissues, e.g. gut ulcers, muscle tears, tendon ruptures, nerve injuries, indicating that BPC-157 reaches target tissues systemically, not primarily through local diffusion. So hopefully this answers some of those questions about local versus systemic distribution. When is the best time to administer these peptides, BPC-157 and TB-500? Since they are not GH peptides, because GH peptides use the same receptor sites as insulin, BPC-157 is derived from our stomach environment, so taking it with food and water is not gonna ruin the bioavailability or the effectiveness of the peptide. All right, now this is probably one of the biggest topics of today. The biggest. The biggest. Breaking down the 5x5 five five vial of CJC-1295, Ipamorelin, and BPC-157, TB-500. These 5x5 five five vials, but also helping you guys understand how to do a 5 milligram vial, because all these peptides come in 5 milligram vials as well. So first off, CJC-1295, no DAC and Ipamorelin. In this 5x5 five five blend, there's either 20 doses at 250 micrograms of each peptide. So when we administer, we're gonna get 250 of Ipamorel and 250 of CJC-1295, it's not split. If we're doing 500 micrograms out of these vials, there's only 10 doses, and that's gonna be 500 micrograms of CJC-1295, no DAC, and 500 micrograms of ipamorelin. If we're doing the single vials of CJC-1295 and ipamorelin, they just have the same amount, except they're in singular. All right, next. So the blend of BPC-157 and TB-500. There's gonna be 10 doses at 500 micrograms, just like we saw in the CJC-1295 NODAC and ipamorelin vial. And then if we wanna do 1,000 micrograms or one milligram, then there's only gonna be five doses. In my previous video, my first video, I said add two ml if we're doing 1,000 micrograms. Personally, after researching these peptides for a while, if we add one ml, pull to the 20 mark, this is gonna be 1,000 micrograms of each peptide, okay? It's gonna be 1,000 micrograms of BPC-157, 1,000 micrograms of TB-500. All right, this is if we're doing 1,000 micrograms. If we're doing 500 micrograms, we could still add one ml and just pull to the 10 mark, but some people like to add two ml and still pull to the 20 mark, and then that's gonna be 500 micrograms of each peptide. The more water we add, the more we could ruin the potency of these peptides, just know that. So that's just breaking these down. So if you guys are interested in other peptides, definitely check out my channel. I got a few on there. I will be coming out with a few videos soon that are different peptides than what I usually talk about. Um, I'm just getting some really good protocols for those. And uh, with that being said, thank you guys for everything. I truly, truly appreciate all of you and uh, wishing you a great day, great summer. If you have any questions, reach out. This is Casey with Living Youthful. If this video has brought you guys value, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.